All right, guys, so as I was saying, um, the disadvantage with the mean is that it is affected by extreme values. So if you have a set of values, for instance, you have two, three, four, five, and then you have a value which is way out of the range of these values. Like, so now you have a, a, an extreme value say 75, right? Now, this extreme value 75, if you are to find the mean of all of these value, including with the 75, it will not give you a true reflection of what the, what the average really is because of this extreme value 75. It greatly, it greatly affects what the mean value should be. And so if you had a closer value to two, three, four, and five, like for instance, instead of 75, you have six, then that would give you a truer reflection of what the average is. So this extreme value would, would actually distort what the, the mean is, and it would not give you a true picture of what the mean is. Is that clear, guys? So that is a disadvantage of using the mean. Now, another disadvantage of using the mean is when the data are discrete. Now, if you know what discrete data is, remember that we were talking about discrete values and um, continuous values. So discrete values would be like values that can only take a certain set of, of, of of, of numbers. Like for instance, true size would have, so you cannot, you cannot find any, for discrete values, you cannot find any variation between the values, right? You cannot find smaller increment of values between them. For instance, if we are counting persons, you either have one person, two person, and three person. We don't generally say one and a half person or two and a half person and so on. And we don't say two and three quarter persons. So you can't, you either have one, two, three. So it, it, that would depend on whole number, right? You don't have a negative person either. So those are called discrete values. So when the data are discrete, the mean can give an impossible value. Right, so if you use discrete values when you're calculating the mean, you can get impossible values. All right, so that's a disadvantage. It cannot be obtained graphically. So whereas we, we will find the median using a graph and the mode using the histogram, the mean, we don't have a graph to represent the mean. So most of what we did with the mean was based on tabular calculation or calculation in the table. All right, so those are disadvantages of the mean. The median now, advantage of the median, it is not affected by extreme value. So if we had, for instance, the same three, um, the same four, five values that we have, two, three, four, five, and 75. Now, to find the median, we simply just pick out the one in the middle. And so this extreme value would not affect it, right? So that's one of the advantage of the median. It is not affected by extreme values. All right, guys, is that clear? Now, another disadvantage, um, what was that response? I said no, sir. Oh, okay. So what I was saying about the mean, sorry, the median, the median is that because you are not calculating the values, if you are finding the median with two, three, four, five, 
and 75. Now, which value here would be the extreme value? Oh, I thought it was 75. No, man, it's 75. Oh, okay. So we are saying that this value would not affect the, the median. You see, in the case of the mean, when you're finding the mean, you'd have to add up all of the values. So this extreme value would have affected the mean, but it doesn't affect the median because you're just simply picking out the middle value with the median, right? And if this extreme value falls outside of that middle value, it means that it has no influence on the median. So that's one of the um, advantage of using the median. It's not, it is not affected by these extreme values. All right, clear, Ms. Brown? Ms. Brown, is that clear enough for you? Yes. Okay. All right, another advantage, it, it can be obtained even if some of the values in the distribution are unknown. Now, if you remember that when we were looking at that table and we were finding the mean of the, free, um, the, the values based on the frequency of the table, we didn't, have to, we didn't have to use all the values. We didn't have to list out all the values when we were finding the median. All we needed was the two middle values. So when we had looked at that table, we noticed that we, we could have found the median by finding the 15th and the 16th term. And all those other values that came after that, we didn't have to focus on them because we didn't need it to cal we didn't need them to calculate the median. All right. So that's what we are saying. An advantage of the median you can obtain the median even if some of the values in the distribution are unknown. So you don't need all of them to know the median. You probably just need to know the first set of values leading to the middle. All right. All right. It can represent an actual value in the data. So the, the median is a is an is a data value. So with the mean. When you find the mean, you add up all the values and you divide by the, um, the amount of values. You don't get any of, the, any of the values in the data. You get a, a different value from what you would have in the data. But for the median, you're actually using one of the values from the data, all right? So that's an advantage. This advantage um, for the mean or the median, for a group distribution, its value can only be obtained from the, um, the O guide. So when you're dealing with a group distribution table, you have to plot that graph in order to find the median. And you can only um, obtain the value by using the O guide. And that is what we would have looked at in the previous lesson. All right. Another disadvantage, when, when only a few observers are available, the median may not be characteristics of the group. So if you only have a few observation, the median, so what, 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 it, what, is this, what it is saying, if you only have a few data, the median might not reflect the characteristics of the group. But if you have a large amount of data, you will probably get a better picture, all right? So that's a disadvantage. Cannot be used in further statistical calculation. So in more advanced statistics, they don't really do much in terms of median. So they cannot do further statistical work with the median. So that's a disadvantage. The mode now, advantage for the mode, it is not affected by extreme values, similar to the median. It is easy to obtain from a histogram. So the mode is much easier to obtain from the histogram 
than how you would obtain the median from the cumulative frequency curve. So it is much easier to obtain. So that's an advantage. To determine it, it one of the advantage, advantages to determine its values are its value. Only values near to the mode are only values near to the modal class are required. So in other words, if you are using the histogram to determine the mode. You only need those rectangles closest to the, to the middle or to the highest rectangle, right? So you don't need to consider all the other values, all right? So only those values near to the modal class are required. Some disadvantages now, there may be more than one mode all right, and remember now, because we are trying to find a, an average, we really want a single value when we are looking for an average, but the mode will give you more than one. Um, you can have more than one mode, so it means that your mode might not represent a single value. It can be a single value, it can be more than one value, and in that case, that would be a disadvantage. When the data is grouped, its value cannot be determined exactly. So when, when, when you have a group distribution, when you have a group distribution, its value cannot be determined exactly. So you cannot, you cannot look in a group distribution and, and, and pick out the exact value for the mode. But when you have just a list of numbers, you can, you can more see the, the value that occurs the most and you can pick it out. But for classes, it's, it's hard to determine um, the, exact, the exact mode when you're using classes. So when, when the data is grouped, then its value cannot be determined exactly. So that's what that is saying. Now, you cannot, it cannot be used in further statistical calculation, similar to the media. So that's one of the disadvantages of the mode. All right, so that would be the end of our stat session. So now we want to move on next. So let me stop sharing this and then now, we can move on to our next slide. All right, guys. So our next slide here has to do with probability. Now, probability is an extension to statistics. In much more advanced courses, it is also called statistics. Um, it is referred to as inferential statistics. And uh, what we would have looked at before the probability that would be referred to as descriptive statistics. So probability is a, is a statistical um, study tool as well, right? But probability is defined a little different from what we have been doing. And so we're going to be looking at what exactly are we talking about when we, when we refer to probability. Anybody have any idea of a definition of probability? Anybody know what probability is about? Can you raise your hand and give me your, your understanding of probability? Anybody? Is it the first that you guys are doing probability? Raise your hand. All right. Anybody else? All right. So let us move into probability. All right. So this is our definition for probability. 
So probability is the science of chance. Now, when we talk about chance, what is it that we're really talking about? We're talking about the likelihood of something happening. All right. And, 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 and we often say to ourselves, you know, certain things only can happen by chance. Now, if we are to think about winning the lotto, what would be the chance of us winning the lotto? It might not be very likely that we would win the lotto. So what we would say is that the probability of, of winning the lotto is, is low for an individual. And why it is low is because we have so many persons who are trying to win and is only one person can win out of that many persons, right? So, so probability is the likelihood of an outcome that is favorable in an event where other outcomes are possible, all right? So it is the likelihood of an outcome that is favorable, meaning an outcome that you want to happen. Favorable is what you are in favor of, all right? So it is the likelihood of an outcome that is favorable in an, in an event where other outcomes are possible, all right? So we talk about event. So the process of getting an outcome is what we call an event, all right? The process of getting an outcome. So um, before you get an outcome, you would have to do something to get the outcome. Like for instance, you know, when, when, when they are playing cricket or so on, in order to decide which team going back first, they generally might flip a coin. And depending on which side you choose, whether heads or tail, once you flip this, the, the coin, if the coin falls and the head turns up, it means your team would go to bat and the next team would go to, to bowl and field and so on. So we are saying that the event here is the flipping of the coin. So the event flipping of the coin will result in an outcome. So the process of getting an outcome is known as an event. Is that clear to you guys? Now, other example of an event is drawing a card from a deck, right? So that's an event. If you shuffle the card and, it, and you pick a card from the top of it, that's an event. And from that event, you can get an outcome based on which card you're in favor of, all right? If, if a lot of you, if you know anything about card games, you know, if you're playing three cards and you and you trump a jack, you would automatically win a game just by trumping the jack. So that's that's um, a favorable outcome that you would want when you're shuffling a deck of cards. Now, tossing a coin. So as I was mentioning about the cricket game, if you toss the coin and it lands on the side that you choose, then your outcome would be favorable. If you roll a dice, now we call it dice, but dice is really plural. So when we're referring to one, we say a die. So if you, if, you, if you roll a die, you may want, depending on what game you're playing, if you're playing like Ludi, you may want a six when you want, um, in order to start off your journey around the track, all right? So six would be a favorable outcome when you're, when you're rolling a die. So um, we have some other definitions here. So we say that the process of getting an outcome is an event. The outcome with the same chance of happening are called equiprobable events. So it means that if you have an event, 
where you have two outcomes that are possible to happen, it would have been an equal probable event, right? Outcome with the same chance of happening are called equal probable events. All right. Um, we could consider an, an example of If you have a bag of, um, say, marbles, and you have five five blue marbles, and you have five red, red marbles, then the, the two set of marbles would have the same, same chance of happening. And so it could be um, what we call an, an equal probable event, right? So all comes with the same chance of happening are called equal probable events are right. outcomes. All right, outcome for which the probability is being worked out is known as favorable outcome. All right, so now in terms of a formula, the definition for favorable outcome, so we say that the outcome for which the probability is being worked out is called favorable outcome. The probability, we use this PR to mean probability. So the probability, and when we say the probability, we are referring to the chance. So the chance of getting a favorable outcome or the probability of getting a favorable outcome would be based on the number of favorable outcome over the total possible outcomes. Now what that means, if you have a bag of five blue marbles and 15 um, red marbles, and you are in favor of the blue marbles, how many blue marbles you have in the bag would be the number of favorable outcome because you are in favor of blue, but you only have five of them in the bag. So the number of favorable outcome, which would be the one that you're in favor of is five. The total possible outcome would be the total marbles in the bag. You have five blue ones and you have 15 red ones. So in total, the possible outcome would be 20. And what you're in favor of would be five. So your probability of a favorable outcome would be five out of 20. Is that clear to you guys? All right, so with that said, here we have some examples. So to find the probability of obtaining a head in a single toss of a fair coin. Now, the word fair is used very often in probability based on the fact that not every outcome can be fair. Now, in casinos where they do a lot of gambling, they can do things to the machine so that the outcome that you want do, does not happen. In that case, if they rig the machine so that a particular outcome won't come all the time, we would say that that is an unfair outcome because they would have done something to the machine. But if the machine is fair and give all the outcome an equal chance of happening, then we would say that it is fair. Now, so if we are tossing a coin and the coin is fair, now some might, someone might wonder to themselves, how can a coin be unfair? Now, you can easily make a coin unfair if you probably try to somewhat put some weight to one side of the coin. You probably put a, um, use some, some nail polish and paint on some extra weight to one side of the coin. And so that can greatly affect which side of the coin, the coin going to turn up when you toss it. 
So when we say a fair coin, we mean a coin which is untampered, a coin that nobody tried to do anything to make it unfair. Is that clear, guys? So to find the probability of obtaining a head in a single toss of a fair coin, what we do, we note that there are two equal probable um, events. That means chances are we can get a head or we can get a tail. So those two outcomes have this equal chance of happening. So when you toss a coin, you don't know which one going to come. You can either get a head or a tail. So both of them have the same chance of happening. So we say that there are equal probable outcomes. Now, which one you're going to favor now is the one that's going to determine the probability. So if you are favoring a head, then we would say the probability of getting a head because there's only one head on the coin, but you have two possible outcomes. You can either get a head or a tail. So if you have one head, the probability would be the one that you're in favor of which is the head, so you only have one. So it is the number of it that you can get, which is one, out of the total number of outcomes that are possible, which is two. So your probability would be one out of two. Is that clear, guys? Now, based on the definition for probability, you probably would have realized, or may, maybe you, you have not really, um, give it much thought, but for probability, you can only get a fraction when you're working out probability. Because remember, when you're calculating, calculating probability, it's really a fraction over the total that you're actually calculating at all times. So if you have a bag of marbles, you take out a fraction of the marble that you favor in favor of, over the total of how many marbles in the bag. So probability will always be a fractional value. So that's a rule to note. If you try to calculate the probability and you get a whole number, you can get the probability to be two or three or four. And the highest probability that you can have is, the prob is, is one. All right, and the lowest probability that you can have is zero. So all probability must be a value between zero and one. And so you can only have fractional values for probability between zero and one. So is either zero, a fraction, or one. Those are the values that you can get for probability. Is that clear to everybody? Now, probabilities often use and in, in, you may wonder how probability can be used, but it is often used in gambling. Um, like for instance, the lottery. The, the lottery pays you so much if you win, but the chance of you winning would be what if you buy only one ticket, is only one ticket out of the total number of tickets that are sold. And so if you have like the lotto in Jamaica and you have more than, in Jamaica we have almost say 2.7 million people in Jamaica. And let's say out of the 2.7 million people in Jamaica, let's say about, 500 or let's say about a million of them would want to buy a lot of. So what that means, your, the probability of you winning would be your one ticket out of a million. Now what is, how likely it is that your ticket going, going to happen? So what it means then, you would have one out of a million that would be a very small probability. So the smaller the probability is the less chance of that happening. And the greater the probability is the greater the chance of happening. Raise your hand if you understand what I'm saying, guys. 
right? So the, 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 more, the greater your chances when you have a greater likelihood of something happening, all right? Now in tossing a coin, what is the chance of getting ahead? It would be one out of two. Now, if you, if you convert that in terms of percentage, you would have a 50% chance of, of, of getting ahead because um, you could multiply half by 100 and that would give you 50%. Now, the higher the percentage is the greater your chance of winning. And that is the reason why you have people who want to have a bigger chance of winning will buy a lot more tickets than just one. So the more tickets you buy, you are increasing the probability that your ticket will come. And so you may have a greater chance of winning. But even if you buy 100 tickets, that is still a low probability because 100 out of a million who may have bought the latter will still give you a low probability, right? Unless you go and buy 1 million tickets and chances are one of those tickets go and play, then you would have a, a chance of winning. And so maybe it would be a good investment if you spend a million dollars to win a million dollars, <laughs> I don't know. Or you spend a million dollars if you know you're going to win five million. So that is the thing. So um, probability is really based on chance. Um, and so chance has to do with the likelihood of something happening. Um, Does luck have anything to do with probability? Anybody? I wouldn't say so, sir. Right. So luck is something totally different. Luck is when it happens even when you have a low chance. That is luck. So if you only have one ticket and win the lotto, so you're really lucky to win when there are so many people who bought a ticket. All right. All right, so for the next example, example two, it says to find the probability of drawing an ace from a deck of cards, deck of 52 playing cards, we know that we only have what? Four aces in the pack of cards. Let me see the hands of those who are familiar with card pack. It's brown. I've never played with a card pack yet. You can tell Miss Miss Brown don't know anything about cards. So what did you say, Kanita? I was asking if you ever played any card games. Yes, sir. Okay. Are you familiar with the different um cards that you have in the card box? Anybody at all familiar with the different cards in a card pack? Miss Wilson, yes, some. tell us tell us all the, 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 the different cards in a card pack, how they how they are arranged. Give me some. So you have yeah, you have what? the ace, you have the ace, sir, and then I mean, I know you call it. the the ace would be number one. Then you have the two, three, four, five, six going up to ten. Then you have the jack, the queen, and then the king and the joker. All right. Now, what, what else do you know about the cards? Remember that the cards are have different patterns on them too. What we call those patterns? Yeah. You have the bee's wing, the heart, the diamond, and the shovel. <laughs> right, the spade. <laughs> okay, spade. <laughs> but anyways, so in terms of bees, different patterns, the, the heart, the, the, the bees wing, the speed and the diamond, how, how the various um, numbers relate to these? How many, how, many, how many number cards you have in the pack of card? And how many pretty cards? Pretty card referring to the king, queen and jack. How many pretty cards you have? 
How many number of cards you have? Um, for the king, queen, and jack would be um, 12. All right, why is it 12? Because four of each, sir. Okay, so. The four how would, jack, four queen, and. Uh, mm -hmm. How does relate to the, to the patterns then? Um, each each of the cards shares different pattern. So one king might have the spade, one having the diamond, one having the heart, and one having the bee's wing. Right. So each card would would represent it by one of these patterns. So so yeah. each card you you would have four of them, one one representing each pattern. So it's the same thing for the numbers. So for each number that you have. You would have, um, for instance, an ace would be one. So you would have four different aces. You would have um, ace of speed, ace of heart, ace of diamond, ace of beeswing. Is it beeswing that there is the correct name or clubs? Sir, me only know it as beeswing from Mr. Small. So I'm not sure. I think his club is the right name. Okay. Right. So, but we, we call it Beeswing too as well. I know the one that you're referring to. So for, for two, you would have two of clubs, uh, two of Beeswing, two of spade, two of diamonds, and two of art. So for all the numbers, and how, how many, what is the highest number that you have in the card bar? It would be the... Oh, the number would be um 10, but the yeah. highest one, yeah, highest one would have been the king overall. All right. How many cards in the pack in total? 52, sir, so. Yeah, without the jokers. We're not referring to jokers. You know that jokers, <laughs> right? Yes. I think uh, it's, how many jokers, sir? Is it is it four or two? I can't recall. <laughs> They don't generally put the joke as them in the they don't generally use the joke as them in the park. All right. So um so that is it. Why why I'm why I'm really spending some time is to give those who don't have an idea of how the card pack is arranged to get them to understand how it is arranged. So for each pattern, either hearts, club, beating, and so on. So for hearts, you have 13 hearts. For clubs, you have 13 clubs. For um, spades, you have 13 spades. And for diamonds, you have 13 diamonds. How, how do we come to 13 with each of these? Because each one... um. Like each each card, sir. Yes. Represent a pattern. Right. So I'm guessing you group you group them by the pattern. Right. So and so your card numbers from one to ten, from east to ten, yes. and then you have three picture cards that come after that, which is jack, queen, and king. Yes, sir. Okay. If you have one to ten, that would be the first ten numbers plus the three picture cards would give you 13. And so for each of those, like for heart, heart would have one of each card, number card and, and picture cards. All right. So um, for those of you who were not so familiar with the card pack, I hope that give a little light to you of how the pack, the card pack is arranged because 